The shield is born for the protection of the whole line. This is one of the most famous quotes from Plutarch from sayings of the Spartans. And we're going to get into it in a little depth in about a minute. But we've been talking in our earlier episodes about the shield, the Greek, ancient Greek shield, the aspis or the hoplon, H-O-P-L-O-N. And in fact, the question sort of is why this is it right here, by the way, this is the Spartan shield and this kind of upside down V is a, a Greek lambda, the letter L, which stood for the region of Greece of which Sparta was the principal city, Lacedemon. Um, but we wonder sort of why is the shield the important thing? Why not the spear? Why not the sword? And it kind of, and in fact, the Greek warrior was known as a hoplite from hoplon, meaning literally a shield warrior. Not a spear warrior, not a sword warrior. And we may ask why that is and what the significance of that is. And it comes down to this question of Plutarch that we just talked before. Plutarch asked, why is it that the Spartans punish with a fine the warrior who loses his breastplate or his helmet in action, but punish with loss of all citizen rights the warrior who loses his shield? And the answer to that question was that Helmet and breastplate are worn for the protection of the individual alone, but the shield is born for the protection of the whole line. Now, the shield in ancient warfare, in Greek warfare, wasn't born by just an individual slugging it out in a melee to protect himself, but it was born shield to shield to shield in a unified, cohesive front so that this man's shield, his hoplon, protected not just himself, but the warrior on his right so that the whole line, as we've said before, would advance towards the enemy, shield, 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 shield. Now, what did this mean? This is something that uh, was not universal in ancient days. In fact, if we go back to the Trojan War, 800 years before Thermopylae, before the heyday of Greek hoplite warfare, you had individual warriors like Achilles and Hector and Odysseus, Diomedes, fighting not as part of a phalanx, but as individual champions. And they would actually roam across the battlefield in chariots driven by a henchman. That was the actual term for the guy who held the reins. And they would go champion to champion where they would kind of fall. Diomedes would go against Hector. And they would have this elaborate sort of dance where each would call out their, their genealogy. My father was this, my grandfather was this, and so on and so forth. And then they would fight champion to champion. And even in the East, the Persians, who were great you know, horse warriors, it was the same thing. Individual nobles and champions fought you know, for their own personal glory and to uh, achieve exploits that would be seen by everyone. But all that changed with the Greek phalanx and with the shield-to-shield -shield warfare. Now, what's really interesting about that is, of course, it's pretty obvious that what comes from that is democracy. What comes from that is trial by jury, responsibility to one's peers. If I'm going to fight side by side with my brother, shield to shield to shield, and risk my life doing that to protect the city, when all is said and done, I want to say in the affairs of that city. So, but here's the really interesting thing, even beyond that, was that if you think about the kings, particularly at the Battle of Thermopylae, Xerxes on the one side, he watched the battle from a throne over the top while being served refreshments by his retinue of, of servants. Whereas Leonidas, the Spartan king, was right down in the dirt, shield to shield next to his other warriors. So what's really interesting here to me here, when we talk about the warrior archetype, is that the warrior archetype is now fighting side by side with the king archetype. Two totally different and, and progressively more evolved archetypes side by side. And we're going to talk a lot about that in the future, the warrior archetype and the king archetype. That's what's coming up as we get into Alexander the Great and we move beyond the Spartans and the Phalanx and the Lambda of Lacedaemon. Mm -hmm.